Hey, before we kick off this video, I just want to go over what this video is. This one is the removal of my factory seatbelts to ship them off to Seatbelt Planet to be rewebbed. They did an awesome job. The owner, Mike Bosley, he's an amazing patient dude. We started this whole dance back in, I guess, September, and it took me until about early January to finally make up my mind and ship him out my belts. But the whole time, we've been going back and forth, just like car guys do. I could tell he's got a passion for this stuff, and he's really interested in getting into the Mopar community. I'm guessing he's getting bored doing all those Lamborghinis and BMWs and everything. He wants some action, some real muscle. The entire experience was great, and, and I highly recommend Seatbelt Planet. In fact, these guys officially earned the Workplay Drive seal of approval. So if you are on the market for a set of seatbelts, custom set to modify and make your car unique, these are the guys to do it. They care about your, your seatbelts. They care about everything that they do. They send you back a beautiful product. You'll get to see that in the next video. This video is what you got to go through to basically take out your seatbelts and get them over to them to be rewebbed. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So why is it every time I want to work on the car, the temperature drops and everything becomes a frozen mess? Yeah, my hands are not going to fare well today. All right, let's make sure I got a good view. I'll do a little streaming while I'm working on it. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to replace the seatbelt webbing with uh, seatbelt webbing from Seatbelt Planet. And I'm going with the flame, or I wanted to go with their flame red because it's a nice match for the RT logo on the seat. Or their, sorry, red number 27. There's so many different colors here, but this red here. And then the other day, they posted on Instagram a new belt they got from Porsche. And uh, that's the one I'm getting. I love it, I love everything about it. So today we are going to clean up this mess. And there we are going to rip out the seatbelts and ship them over to Seatbelt Planet to be rewebbed with the black belt with the red edges. And I'm extremely excited about it. Um, to do this uninstall, it's pretty simple. You just got to pry this open and then uh, take this out. And this requires a T50 bit. Uh, the T50 bit, I'll put a link to uh, in the description below. You can use my Amazon affiliate to buy it. And of course, any purchases you make, you pay whatever cheap Amazon price you can pay. And then a couple of bucks go towards me for recommending you to use Amazon. All right, so that being said, we are going to pull the bottom part of the belt out. Uh, one thing I highly recommend before you do this is we, uh, we go on ahead and we pop the battery out. Or not the battery, we pop the uh, negative terminal on the battery. And the reason for that is because we are messing with uh, the pyrotechnics. Look at that little honestly OCD sticker there. Okay, so we're going to pop out the negative terminal on the battery. And then we're going to continue with this uninstall. All right, back in the car. First thing we're going to want to do is get your hands underneath here and pry this up. You can do this all with your fingers, no tools required. And the reason for that is you gotta get this Phillips head screw out right here. And of course, I didn't bring a Phillips head driver over. Mess in here. I always forget, flat heads on top, Phillips on bottom. You're gonna need two types of Phillips head drivers for this uninstall because we gotta go into uh, a tight space. Okay, so we pull this out. So after you pull that screw out, you're gonna pull this piece of this cover off. Just pry it out there. There you go. Good. Then we're going to go ahead and remove this the teeth 50 down here. And my hands are already feeling the pain of the cold. So this should be good as we start cutting my hands open there. There's a couple pieces to this, so I want to make it very clear. So when you reassemble this, you do it the right way. This is weird. One of them had a clip for me and one of them didn't. I've already had the seatbelt out, so I know what to expect. So this one has a really good clip that sometimes is a pain in the ass to remove. Um, I'm sure if you ship it to Seatbelt Planet, they are going to return it to you. The other option is we can go ahead and pry this off. And I'll go grab my pry tool. Let's see how easy this is to pry off. Yeah, this is easy to pry off. So you can just go ahead and easily pop this off. And don't lose it, of course. There we 
go. Pop that out, pop that out, and pull out the washer just in case you don't want it to accidentally fall out and then not notice it and then you'd be stuck without a washer. I would recommend just putting it all back together. Only takes a moment so you don't lose anything. There we go. Alright, so the bottom half is out. Go ahead, pull off the rubber. This way another thing you don't have to ship out to them. Alright, so now we are ready to pull this piece away here. So it's just a basic get it pulled out and give it a good shove. All right, same thing down here. Again, there's just clips on these. There. All right, now you wanna go a little deeper. There's more clips as you go back. It gives you more room to work. So just put your hands in there and give it a good shove. Now the problem I had is the seat. The seat gets in the way and I don't feel like taking out the seat. I know you can just like yank it out, but let's see if we could do it without removing the seat. Most likely we can. So what we have here, let's make sure my camera is looking good here. And what we have here, we got these two bolts here. Let's see, are these the T50? Yes, they're the T50. So we can use the same tool to pull those out. I'm gonna go with a longer stem here. This way I can get some good, you know, leverage on it. The rest is down here. And this is the part that's the pain. There's the T50 down here as well. Let's make sure you guys can get in there. There's a T50 right there. And then there is a little Phillips head screw. Right there. Excuse all the head bobbing. I'm trying to get the camera to focus on what you guys are seeing. All right, so this part here was the pain. So I'm gonna get working on that. Just give me uh, one second to let's get my Phillips head screwdriver here. Go ahead and just pull that out. Now remember, when you uh, remove the negative terminal of the battery, you now don't have to worry about any issues with unplugging the uh, pretensioner. And what that is, is it's a uh, little charge that shoots, in most cases, shoots some ball bearings around inside of the assembly. And what it does is it yanks the seatbelt back when your airbags deploy. So it pulls back on the seatbelt to pull you back into position. All right, and now it has started snowing. So uh, yeah, it's getting colder. All right, so let's get the next steps going. We gotta get these two T50s out right here. Get my extension. Let's see, is that gonna be long enough? Yes, all right. Last thing I want to do is lose this behind the seat. There we go. Let's do the next one. This one's a little bit more difficult because it's on an angle, so you're going to have to kind of reach around there. There we go. See, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to be dropping bolts and tools down inside that crack there. My fingers are getting numb, so I'm getting a little clumsy. But we're going to get through this. There we go. Screw is out. Get my fingers around it there. And of course, I dropped it. Oh, the screw stayed in. Good. All right. Two bolts out. Okay, you want to be careful. These buckles are metal, so you don't want to bang it against your car. I got one left to go, and I saved the worst for last because... Let me bring these back through. Because this part here is a giant pain in the butt. And the reason for that is there's no room to work. So what you got to do is you got to get your T50 on the flattest driver you got and you gotta work it in there it's probably there we go ratchet switch directions on me again there we go all right you just want to make sure you don't lose that screw that's all Make 
sure you guys got a good view right there. Yeah, you do. Nice. You can't be afraid to push this all the way out to get that last inch off. Problem is, is you can't really work down there. I'm gonna try this against better judgment, but if I lose that bit, then I'm screwed for the rest of the day. So I'm just gonna do it with my fingers. Teeny little bit at a time. So close, I can feel it. There we go. All right, all three. Now just some important thing to note on mine, there's a uh, turquoise Loctite on the top, blue on the bottom. One last thing you need to deal with, all right, is unhook that. And then you have, let me try and get you guys in there. You have that little guy right there. And you'll see there is an orange, um, I guess we would call that a lock on there. And what you want to do with that is you want to use a little driver and unlock it. So you just need to pop it up. And I can't do it with this giant driver that I got in my hand, so give me a second, right back. Of course, I don't have anything I need when I need it, right? And that is the lock. There we go. Once the lock is pried up, we disconnect. That's it. Seatbelt retentioner comes out. All right. And this is what you're shipping over to Seatbelt Planet. Okay, and the reason you're shipping the entire assembly is because they have to stitch all this in, wind this all up, get all this all set, put in your stoppers. So you're gonna wanna wrap all these pieces individually, you know, to protect, you know, things from banging around, but this is what you wanna ship over to them with your invoice and uh, get it going. All right, and then you have all your extra parts here, remember. Don't forget to pull out the clips, save the clips. You got the two turquoise Loctited bolts for the top. You got the one blue Loctited bolt for the bottom. They look exactly the same. All right, so we needed a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver. We needed a T50. Give you a good close up of that. T50 to pull that thing out. Some extensions. Uh, you wanna save all that stuff. All right. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we're gonna ship these bad boys off. There we go. All right, I'm gonna rip this guy out. Just lift and slide it out of the way. Let's remove the screw here. Good to go. Set that aside, slide this guy up. I'm gonna put the camera in view. I apologize for that, but I wanna make sure I'm catching everything. There we go. Okay, we got that T50 on there. There we go. Now that clip that was on the other one is not on this one. So go figure, that's kind of weird. This is just a little washer, you squeeze it together and you push it through the back. So it's kind of split so you can get it in there. Again, put this back on just to make sure we don't lose it. All right, and then we take off the rubber boot. Just pulls right over. So we're not shipping extra stuff to Seatbelt Planet. Now, same thing again, no tools needed. You just kind of lift this up a little bit, get it around the molding, pry it away from the molding itself. And just give it a good, oh, my hands hurt like hell now. All right, ready? Give it a good shove. Oh, hang on. Forgot about this right here. Just pop this off real quick. 
set that aside there we go and then get your hand inside just watch out for these sharp clips here and give it another push another push up top there we go and one more push down below there we go now we're good all right oh and now we got a really nice close-up of that clip so maybe i'll just use uh i'll use this footage to do the clip oh look at that that clip is loose you pull this lock tight lock out and then slide this out so this little lock right here comes out and you pull it out pretty simple all right so now that we dealt with that that is weird though that this lock was kind of loose not sure how that happened all right two bolts right here that we got to take out these are t50s as well you just don't want to drop them so once you get towards the end take the stem off put your fingers around it and pull them out same thing we got that turquoise loctite on those there we go all right now i'm going to pull this through here's another weird thing this one specifically has like a, a clip on it so i can't take this off unless i grab it with a uh, a wrench and spin it backwards so i'm going to do that later but just another thing to note, the inconsistency, inconsistencies of building these cars. Like there's clips in places in one and not in the other. Now the T50 again, down on the bottom, make sure we're going in the right direction. Make some this is one of the things where you got to determine, do you want to take the seat out and get, have more room? Um, I know removing the seat is fairly easy, totally not necessary, but the passenger side is a huge pain. The driver's side, not so bad. But again, you really, you just want to make the determination. You want to spend an extra minute or two taking that back seat out. Or do you want to just power through it? Again, keep your hand on it at all times so it doesn't fall down behind the seats. Then you really got to take the seats out. The last thing we got to deal with is this tiny little Phillips head screw here. All right, that screw's gone. And we're gonna lift it up and unhook it and pull it out. For some reason, it's stuck down below. Great. There we go. And we're gonna pull all this stuff back through. all those metal pieces all right we got the seat belts removed and uh getting ready to ship out the seat belt planet just wanted to go over some of my color choices because uh there are a lot of them these are some of my originals my wife didn't like this color she thought it would be too bright too orangey so i kind of switched over to flame red which matches the RT logos in my seats. One of my favorites though was this one here, but the orange bead was so tiny that I didn't really think it was a worthwhile effort to swap it out. But uh, the ones that I chose, um, it's definitely gonna look good. It's definitely gonna match. You guys voted and it was unanimous almost. So we are going with the red edge. Uh, I think it's a little bit different than the one I've got here, the sample, but uh, if you're interested, there are a ridiculous amount of colors. This one matches Sublime. This one matches Octane Red. There are so many awesome colors. You got this one here. This is a Go Mango exact match. This one here is a B5 Blue exact match. There's just so many colors to choose from. Just got a question from Green Goblin RT. Is there a dark green? Judging from his awesome car, if you don't follow him, check it out. But uh, I'm guessing military or dark green. I'm thinking military matches your car the best. But these are the green slash brown. I had a question from NJ Plum Crazy. That's a good color for you. The uh, standard belts are going to cost you about uh, just under $300 for the front belts. Uh, that would be uh, rewebbed and shipped back to you in a standard color. These, 
I don't have pricing on these just yet. I know they're a little bit more expensive because they're custom order. Um, and sometimes they're not in stock or easily accessible. So you have to kind of reach out to them to get the prices on these. Probably just a little bit more expensive than your standard belt. 30 short minutes later, I got both my driver and passenger seatbelts installed from Seatbelt Planet. I'm super impressed with that crisp red stripe around the edges. I think it's just the perfect thickness to give me a little bit of color without being too crazy. My wife likes to bust my chops from time to time, and uh, she asks the other day, what are you going to do since you didn't go with orange with all the orange accents in your car that don't match like your shifter? Well, I showed her. Just ordered a uh, brush metal pistol grip with adjustable yoke from Barton. 